Juno first occupies a curious place among the thankfully numerous arcade games that appeared throughout the two golden decades during which innovation, imagination, and creative risk-taking were still common in video games. I don't use terms like Bronze Age and Golden Age and, I don't know, Calcium Age, with which some people insist on lumbering the wondrous story of video games. Anyway, this one is superbly done, and a favorite of those who've played it, once they've managed to even hear about its existence, or stumble upon it in MAME, and it possesses all the elements of any game that you, if you're into stuff from this period, would probably consider essential. And yet it's hardly ever referred to, because reference is not a verb, or written about or talked about, you know, in, in current writings or on podcasts, or even if one goes back to the game magazines of the period. I really dig the game myself came out in 1983. Konami licensed it to Gottlieb in America, however you pronounce it, and when Gottlieb ja? changed its name to Milestar, M-Y, uh, also in 83, that company distributed it here. The game has a cool slanted 3D perspective. Your ship appears at the bottom, but it can move in eight directions. The screen's vertically oriented, but there's some cool, mild horizontal scrolling as you move back and forth. And also there's a new enemy formation in each wave, and there are countless varieties, at least I'm not going to count them, which keeps the game consistently compelling. It has a Defender Stargate type element. You can rescue humanoids by colliding with them. There's suddenly a lot of red on the screen designating a period during which every eliminated target gets you 200 points above whatever you've earned for the last enemy you've taken out. That's a unique bonus scoring system as far as I'm aware. Scoring depends on which wave you're in anyway. See what happens. You guys think it's all fun and games until somebody gets hurt. Another unique bit is that you have to free each humanoid before you rescue him by shooting some kind of capsule in which he's imprisoned. A 2009 Atari 2600 conversion of the game was programmed by Chris Walton with the graphics by Nathan Strum. It's a 32K program. I'm surprised the cartridge isn't so big that it has to be backed into the console on the back of a truck Anyway, Chris Walton had also done Hunchy 2 in 05. Check them both out, they're excellent. In fact, you can read all about Hunchy 2 in the Classic Gaming Bookcast, an electronic book that's available for free without signing up for anything. Just click on the PDF link or download the PDF. It's on orphanedgames.com. I happen to write it, as well as a lot of the articles that are also on that home page, along with Adam Trianfo, who you know as Bally Alley. Uh, but that's all incidental, of course. And why the weird title? Well, a good guess is that Juno is the name of a space outpost, and the player, who controls the colony's last few survivors, because he get more than one ship, you see, must put Juno first. In other words, don't turn your ship around and just leave like any sensible guy would do. Our stupid but brave, those words often mean the same thing, pilot fights to the death, and we get to have fun at his expense, since he has to do whatever we tell him via the controller. Ha! In the manual for the 2600 translation, we read that the player captures enemy astronauts. Well, I say that I'm rescuing humanoids. The arcade version sounds like Defender anyway, and I don't want a bunch of enemy astronauts taking up space in my ship, arguing about who gets the front seat, and eating my sandwiches. Besides, it's well known that invading aliens don't use deodorant. You can have up to five laser blasts on screen at once, yes I've counted those, and there's automatic continuous firing, you know if you hold down the button. It's very 
floaty and zappy. And I dig how you can circle around instead of just sliding back and forth. It gets incredibly hard before it gets too repetitious. I have read that if you survive until you've completed wave 16, the formation from wave 1 returns, and so forth. The aliens stay wave 16 mean, though. You can fatally shoot a humanoid, although he takes a second to die, so you get the chance to think about what you've done. Personally, it makes me feel bad, because I don't get any points for it. In the 2600 version, the humanoids have grown smart enough in the intervening years to wear armor, so you can't kill them. Hey, you there. Tie up your pet armadillo. This park is supposed to be for everyone. There you go. Now, Juno not to mess with me. Oh, come on, that was funny. You failed to distract me with your skillful acrobatics. It kind of looks like I'm needlessly destroying a bunch of yummy, sugary breakfast cereal. This death is part of your nutritious breakfast, you freak. Aw, uh, did you see that? They helped me sweep all the sandwich crumbs out of my ship. How kind. Once in a while, it must occur to the aliens how badly one guy in a paper airplane is beating them, and they finally try to get organized. Well, that didn't work out for you either. What else you got? I see. You're firing things at me that fire at me. That's pretty desperate. It's quite an original element, though. I have this on the easy difficulty, by the way, with five ships. I wanted this film to last long enough to talk about the game. The default settings are exactly what you would imagine. Enjoy your minor victory while you can, aliens. I always get even eventually. Fuck Juno, you first. Here's one of them humanoid capsule things. Maybe it's a space cage. It doesn't have bars, see, because he would be sucked out through them and be free and dead. He wouldn't make for much of a hostage then, would he? The key to avoiding the homing missiles is to speed up and slow down over and over until it goes away. Or it's right in front of you and you can blast it. Damn right, you move when I say move. Your paper airplane, or perhaps open space umbrella, can warp, as it's called. And it can do this three times. As you can see to the upper right. Another is added when you clear a wave, but you cannot surpass three at any time. It's a pretty good defense mechanism, actually, once you get into the reflexive habit of pushing the warp button when you're about to be hit, as, as with your shield in Satan's Hollow or Phoenix, you know. Well, I put Juno 7th or 8th, not 1st. 
Let's get even quickly. Aliens, prepare to be turned into many dots. The earlier formations are rather easy to wipe out. Sending just a few attackers out at a time while the rest of them hide isn't a very good battle plan. Come on down. Don't be afraid. Everyone has to die sometime. Juno first. Don't overlook this one. Well, unless you love armadillos too much to kill them. If you weren't all dead, you would notice that you're all dead. <laughs>